Hallo zusammen! I guess this one is especially interesting for non-German listeners of Rammstein, but even to me as a German, as a native speaker, I think this one is interesting when you really reflect on, well, the linguistic aspects and specialties in Rammstein songs. And not just in general, but regarding typical German things mentioned in the lyrics, in the songs themselves. And that's why today I want to talk about just that. Typical German things in Rammstein songs. One quick and important thing before we're gonna start though, well, typical German doesn't have to equal, it can, but it doesn't have to equal exclusively German. Please keep that in mind. That being said though, I strongly believe there are things that are more or less typical German because they have a certain influence, a certain prestige in the German culture, how we live as Germans and I think they certainly can be pointed out in terms of Rammstein lyrics because there are a couple of them, a couple of those interesting things that we could talk about. Let's begin with my first choice, maybe a rather not so obvious one, I don't know. I'm talking about the title track and opening song on Rammstein's fourth album from 2004, Reise Reise. It's arguably a sort of hidden reference, but I think it's a pretty cool one. Without any specifying context, the title Reise Reise could and would be translated to Travel Travel, I guess. For Die Reise, Singular, Die Reisen, Plural, the vacation or travel, and the related verb Reisen, to travel. It's not to be confused with the German noun Der Reis, only singular, the Reis, though. In the nautical context of this tune, it rather refers to an old common German wake-up call on a ship. One example of this one could be Reise Reise, Aufstehen! Reise Reise, get up! Travel Travel, get up, you know, we have to go! This wake-up call dates back to the old high German term Reise, which today would be translated with Der Aufbruch, the departure, which itself originates from an ancient Germanic verb with the same meaning, to depart, basically to rise or to arise. Verbalized twice, it almost resembles the German title, Arise Arise. Reise Reise. The meaning to rise also refers to the album's cover in a slightly different way because it reads Flugrekorder, black box, and also the warning phrase nicht öffnen, do not open. Apart from that, the German Hanse referred to a huge group of German merchants who were located especially in northern Germany. As a group or community, they existed from the 12th century to the 16th century AD and they were a massive economic factor for the previous incarnations of what we know as Germany today. They sailed with ships to other countries and traded various goods there, which led to other countries taking part in the Hanse as well. At one point, more than 300 cities had joined this huge merchant group and since they traded very successfully, they helped to establish many northern German towns as rich and relevant cities a huge impact and influence which can still be seen by looking at some impressive old buildings there. So in general, sailing with ships, sailors, merchants, economics and inventors have played a huge and important role in the prestige of Germany and establishing it as one of the important nations or one of the important regions in the world back in the day. From northern Germany, we're gonna move a little bit further down to West Germany, especially North Rhine-Westphalia, I'd say, but there are also other locations and places in Germany that could apply to this song. I'm talking about Sonne, Sun. Now, there are three things that come to my mind when I think of Sonne, and the music video especially. One is rather obvious, one not so much, and one might even be surprising to some of you, I don't know. As most of you will know, the video features the famous character of Snow White, with her typical dress and looks. That character is actually called Schneewittchen, or as she was called in the first edition of the 1812 Brothers Grimm fairy tale book Kinder und Hausmärchen Schneeweißchen, which actually is the literal equivalent to Snow White in English. It's a famous German fairy tale character. In the video, she's the focal point, the goddess, the main focus of the dwarfs who mine something that seems to be gold, which she in turn takes as a drug. I've talked and analyzed that song and video a bit more in depth in a separate video by the way, so I won't talk too much about that here. 
Another interesting theme you could say, I guess, is that very mining topic, that aspect of the video. That one is a good example for something that is typical for certain parts of Germany, yet nothing Germany exclusive. For many decades, and even up until these days, der Bergbau, the mining, has been a massive industry for the Ruhrgebiet, the Ruhr area in North Rhine-Westphalia. There were many, as we call them, Zechen, mines, for several types of coal, and this industry was a big economic factor in that region and for its prestige once again. It's well known for that work still to this day and those scenes of the guys portraying miners in the video are really close to home in a way to me personally because I'm from the Sauerland and I live very close to that whole area, the Ruhrgebiet, and I like it very much. Let's take a short look at the original purpose of the song, which might surprise you. The lyrics were written with two people in mind which were extremely successful at the time the Klitschko brothers. They are Ukrainian, yet they speak excellent German and have lived in Germany for many years. They had and still have a huge fan base in Germany, and we also have had some pretty successful boxers as well. Sonne was written as a fighting entry song for the Klitschko brothers, I guess hence the counting in the song as well, but their management decided it was too heavy. But Rammstein still luckily produced it and it became a hit. The next song I want to talk about was released in 2005 of Rosenrot, and I have to say that the first time I heard this one back in the day, I immediately thought, okay, this is special, because the lyrics are so creative, so lyrical, so poetically written, even though, to be honest, it's not only his influence that make these lyrics special and fascinating, in my opinion at least, it's also the way he basically merged and mixed two pretty much well-known German fairy tales and legends, myths, stories, you know, whatever you want to call them, to a new story, which is, uh, well, pretty, pretty cool. And I'm talking about the single to the eponymous album Rosenrot. Plus, by the way, he also used a well-known German sing for the chorus and basically twisted and turned it in a way. So let's find out more about that one as well. One part of the lyrics to Rosenrot is the fairy tale Schneeweißchen und Rosenrot by the Gebrüder Grimm, the brothers Grimm, the story of Snow White and her sister Rose Red, the literal translation of the compound term Rosenrot, the red of roses in a way. It was first published in 1827 by Wilhelm Grimm, but it's based on a children's story released by Caroline Stahl in 1818. It's the second time there's a direct inclusion of Schneewittchen after the music video to Sonne. The second influence and part of the lyrics to Rosenrot is a poem titled Heideröslein by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, released in 1789, which also gets used as a song. The earliest origin and version of this popular German ballads theme can be traced back to 1602. The very first line in the song Rosenrot, sah ein Mädchen ein Röslein stehen, is a slightly changed version of the first line of this poem, sah ein Knab ein Röslein stehen. Very literal, direct translation, saw a lad a little rose standing. Both fairy tales and tales adapted lyrical style in this one are pretty cool examples of how old German texts and poems were written in those days, which words were used, how words might get shortened according to the meter, and how different and flexible the phrasing or sentence structure can be in poetic contexts. That's why it chose to translate that line very literally, by the way. Stehen at the end of that line is a shortened version of stehen, the verb, but using stehen without the last e, the e, and therefore a slightly shorter written and verbalized version makes the meter flow better and work in the first place. The chorus phrase tiefe Wasser sind nicht still, deep waters aren't silent or calm, is a twist on the well-known German saying stille Wasser sind tief, silent or calm waters are deep, which usually describes someone who seems to be very reserved and passive, maybe even shy, but actually they are really invested, motivated, even crueler than meets the eye. It could be used as a positive or a negative thing, for instance when you sense someone is dishonest and hiding their thoughts. I've talked about this example and other German sayings you can find in other Rammstein songs in another video, so feel free to check that one out in the end card. Yeah, uh, the next one is a pretty obvious choice, I guess, but you know, still has many things to offer. And of course, I'm talking about their comeback single, their 2019 comeback single, Deutschland, Germany. 
Both the song and especially the music video are really well done in my opinion and they complement each other perfectly. In short, in my opinion, the song is a testament to the inner conflict Germans might have. Because, you know, it's conflict between being proud of things Germans have achieved, invented, marketed into the world, written, composed or even played in terms of like football or soccer, yet being aware of the very bad things that happened in the past, World War II being one example. The music video covers about 2000 years of quote-unquote German history from ancient Roman times to the Federal Republic of Germany, which has been existing like this since the German-German reunification in 1990. Again, have made a video about that as well. And in addition, there's also an abstract metaphorical future scenario in space. A good example is the band being dressed as Stasi officers and till resembling former East Germany or GDR president Erich Honecker. In all scenes, Germania, a personification of Germany and its various incarnations throughout the centuries, including certain more or sometimes less nationalistic tendencies and connotations and the like, joins as a linking element next to the red lasers, which basically work as a linking element that visually tie all of these German histories together. That was a very, very superficial short summary of only a few basic themes and topics motives in both the song and the video, so if you want to find out even more, you know what to do, check out my other Deutschland and Rammstein based videos. Last but not least for this video, a rare type of song in terms of Rammstein, because this one is based on a true, a well, really distinct German criminal case. And I'm talking about Mein Teil. There are so, so many things that could be said about the song and the unique German killing case it is based on. And because that is, I created two dedicated videos. One about the lyrics of the song and one about the whole historic context, the criminal case. The background to this song is, in 2001, German computer engineer Armin Maivis killed a man and ate his flesh. So far, so quote unquote ordinary in terms of human cannibalism cases, okay. But there is a moral twist to this whole case which also made it really difficult for the German judicial system to accordingly cope with this case. The victim wanted to be eaten and not just that, it wanted to be eaten alive. The song's title, Mein Teil, is quite an ambiguous one as well. It could be relating to my part, a body part for instance that got eaten, and also my thing in the sense of a colloquial vulgar term of the victim's penis, which also plays a role in what happened back that day. And the video works as a more abstract, creative way of expressing basic themes to this case. Domination, violence, anger, love, sadness, longing, fantasies and much more. A great yet also disturbing song. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did feel free to leave a like and to spread the word to share my videos with other people that might also be interested in Rammstein and the German language, maybe even both at the same time. Might be possible, I don't know, maybe you know some people that you know would like to watch a video like this one. That would make my day. Thank you very much. <laughs> and thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this one. I certainly did. I'm your vlog Dave. Tschüss und bis zum nächsten Mal.